Good morning to our Anointed Ground Church family and our listening audience. We truly thank God to be able to be in your presence today for our worship experience on this last Sunday in the month of October. Time has really gone by so fast in this month, but we truly give God glory and praise and to be able to say that our Anointed Ground Church family is safe and all of our friends are staying safe during this pandemic. We love each of you today, and we have our birthday shout outs for this week that is coming up. Happy birthday to Sister Jacqueline Holly on Tuesday, October the 27th. So Sister Holly, enjoy your birthday. We know that God has some blessings for you. And on Friday, October the 30th, we have three birthdays. And it's so strange with the three birthdays we have two birthdays that is a mother and a son on the same day. So that is very special. So on October the 30th, Friday, happy birthday to Sister Phyllis Holt and her son, Brother George Burnett. So you both enjoy your birthdays. And on October the 30th, also happy birthday to Sister Carmen Williams. We thank God for all of the birthdays and it's a blessing when you can enjoy your birthdays with your family. I like to call your attention to our scripture for today. And when pastor told me what the scripture was going to be today, I just, my heart just leaped because whenever it talks about faith, it does something to me. So it will be Hebrews chapter 11, the faith scripture. And it starts at chapter 11, verse one. And it reads as follows. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it, being dead, yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. And verse six, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. We truly thank God for the word that has been shared today. And when pastor finishes the message about faith today, I pray that your faith will increase and God will bless in a mighty way. Pastor Reeves. Let me say also good morning. God bless you guys. It's good to be here on another Sunday and to give God all the glory, honor, and praise. Thank you, sweetheart, for those announcements, and thank you also for sharing that scripture on our behalf. We are so appreciative, and I'm always blessed to have a wonderful, wonderful helpmate that God has given me. So to God be the glory for you, Sister Reese. Thank you. Again, we're grateful um, to have my son, daughter-in-law, and grandkids with us. And this is a very important week that we're coming up on. Um, it's time to cast our right to vote. You know, to not vote is to make a decision also. Uh, you know, so we, we have an opportunity to play a very, very important part. This is a very, very important election. This is a very, very important time and season for this nation. And we need to be sure that we don't take for granted this opportunity to vote. Now, myself and my wife, we've already taken the liberty to vote early, and there was a little bit of a line, but it was still, it was still, things still went smooth, and we was able to cast our vote and uh, uh, honor that particular legal right that we have. So I'm asking each of you, if you haven't, uh, try to find a location that's close by and go ahead and cast that vote early. 
You don't wait to the third. If you, if you have to wait to the third, I mean, that's fine. But right now, you have uh, quite a few days left that you can cast your vote early and uh, get that ballot to be counted. So pray for our nation. Pray for uh, everyone. And, and we pray that God will allow there to be a smooth transition and things to work out. Uh, however he desires. We, everything is in his hands. Uh, it is our job to do our part and cast our vote. Can you say amen? Uh, we've been, like I said, blessed. And as Sister Reed said before, here we are at um, almost about to end October. Wow, you think since March, the time's gone. You know, time has moved on. But I feel so good and so blessed that, uh, like I said, for the most part, everyone in the congregation is doing well. Uh, families and, and, and extended family, everyone is doing well. And I pray the same thing for you. So continue to trust God. Continue to read Psalms 91 and realize that uh, we have a loving and caring Savior. God is in control. Doesn't matter what it looks like, doesn't matter what it sounds like, God is in control. And I love what Paul says. Paul says, if God be for us, who can be against us? So trust him, rely upon God, and uh, he's going to bring you and I through this. Now, we do pray that you're keeping that merry heart as always. Uh, you know, pastor is trying to keep up with some jokes and, and find something that we can share. And I want you to know, uh, before this, this is, this is a joke about a pastor who's trying to raise some funds for his church. But I want to take this opportunity why, before I share this joke, is that I am so grateful and thankful, and we are so appreciative. There are so many of you that are giving, and you're keeping the ministry going, and you're, you're keeping us from having to, to, to uh rely off of reserves or anything like that. And I want to personally say thank you from the bottom of our heart. Some of you are giving online, PayPal and things that have been set up. Some of you are giving by mail. And, and there are those who are e even just dropping theirs off, some by the daycare and even by the home. So again, we just want to say thank you very, very much. The church is still thriving. We thank God. He's still providing. And uh, to God be the glory. It only speaks well of you as individuals and the type of people you are. So here we had a pastor also who uh, was concerned about uh, uh, offerings and things, and he was trying to raise some additional money for a building fund. So he had this idea that he would, he would put electricity on the certain pews in the church. So, you know, he had everything set up, and he had certain pews with electrical wire running all through them. So one particular Sunday, he came to the pulpit, and he said, all who will give $100 toward the new building, please stand up. And he reached under his pulpit and pushed the button, and 20 people jumped up. He said, oh, okay, very good, very good, very good. So he went down a little further. He said, fine, that's fine. He preaches, looked around and says, now all who will give $500, would you please stand up? He reached down to the pulpit and pushed another button. 20 people jumped up. He said, oh, fine, excellent, excellent, good, good, good. This is good. Thank you for volunteering. Thank you. He went on a little further and he said, now all of you who will give $1,000, please stand up. And he had a lever, not a button. He pushed that button and he pulled that lever up, that is, slammed it shut, and 15 deacons were electrocuted. <laughs> Can somebody say, hey, man. <laughs> Isn't God good? Say, keep laughing. <laughs> oh, I see you out there. You keep laughing. Amen. Say, a merry heart does good like a what? A medicine. Amen. Amen. Now, I want to talk to you a little bit today, and I want to, to, to somewhat be not too long, be kind of brief and so forth. You know, we, we're, 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 we would like to 
do things, everything decent and in order, of course. But uh, I want to just try to, to be brief with you because I want to introduce a little bit of a series. I want to talk with you about faith. And I want to, today's message, just teach a little bit and give you somewhat of an introduction. Uh, you know, where we are with this situation and what we're going through, of course, it, this is taking some time. And you have to realize that one of the things that we have to make sure we safeguard is our faith. That is what we have. That is the mechanism. That is the, the way that God is giving us to have access to anything that he has for us. So we want to build upon a strong foundation. So uh, uh, if God leads me, I pray he does. I would like to teach a little bit in a few series of sermons in regards to faith and build upon that. My wife read a favorite scripture, one of her favorite scriptures, because she's a lover of faith. And many of you know her as a faith walker. And uh, I appreciate, too, over the years, the things that we have acquired, the things that God has given to us. Oh, that is such a special feeling when you can look back over your life. It'll be sad to look back over your life and see that there's been no prayers answered. That's sad. If you look back over your life, there's, you can look back and you say, I can't tell where God have answered anything. That's a sad moment. Oh, that's sad. Something's wrong. But it's a wonderful thing when you can look back over your life and see that God has been faithful. He has answered our prayers. He has been good to us. He has brought us through so many things. Here we're standing in an edifice that he built and paid for. And because he knew about all the, what we're going through right now. He knew way back, listen to me, 10 years ago, he knew that the church did not need a mortgage. We were celebrating and dancing in 2010 and everything, but God knew that what was coming in 2020. And it'd be so much, it, it'd be so much better if the church did not have that overhead. So just think about the wisdom of God. Now, we don't get uh, puffed up or anything like that, because we have to stay humble because there are some churches that don't have that privilege. There are some churches that don't have that, have the ability to say that they don't have a mortgage. Some of them are worried about the bank taking their buildings. But isn't God good? Can you say God's good? I'm just, I'm, I'm going to get to the message. I'm just talking. But I just want you to know, it's good to just look back. That even when we don't know what he's doing, he's doing something on our behalf. Even when we don't even... We're just going about what we think is normal. God is still working on our behalf. So t 10 years ago, he saw this year, 2020, and he prepared us. He allowed us to position ourselves so that we can easy, a very easy way to, 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 to weather the storm. Can you say hallelujah? So I want to talk about faith. My God, my God, and what it's all about. And the first scripture I want to pull up that we have a chance to pull up on screen, is Romans 12, chapter, and the third verse. And if I can use as a subject for this teaching, it is going to be by faith. Say that with me. Say, it's going to be by faith. Romans 12 and 3 says, For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. So God has dealt to every person the measure of faith. He has given us a certain amount of faith. He has dispensed you don't have to be jealous of anyone. God has given us a certain amount of faith he has placed within us. So everybody, say everyone, has a measure of faith that has been given for them to work with on their behalf. Now, let me just share with you how simple this is. When you think about basic daily living, we have to have faith even in our basic daily life. We drive cars by faith. We drive believing that they're going to take us to our destination. Some of us, we need more faith depending on the year of our car. Can you say amen? 
But 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 we 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 just hop in the car, turn the ignition. Don't even think about the fan belts or anything like that. Just say, get me to where I'm going. We just go by faith. Think about the fact when we eat, when we drink, or or or, or something like that. Think about a bottle of water. You just pick up a bottle of water. Looks clear. You unscrew the cap and you just start guggling it down. Don't even think about it. It's not. Has it been tested? It's the same thing. If you eat a can of, if if you drink a can of Coke or or, or Pepsi or whatever, or Sprite, you know, you, you just pop the top and just start drinking, and people pour it out. As long as they see the bubbles, everything is a okay. How do you know that some some contract worker or some spiteful worker didn't sabotage Coca Cola because he's getting fired? But we we drink by faith. We go to McDonald's by faith. You know, they they give us stuff, don't they? We have carry out by faith. You don't know what happened. Y'all better help me this morning to that burger or that fries or, or whatever, amen. How many he kicked on the floor before he put back, make sure, y'all ain't gonna help me, are you? But, 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 but all of this we do by faith. We pay the people the money, take the food. We have somebody even, they, it now it's popular, Uber Eats and all this stuff, Grubhub, and everybody bring this, you got strangers you never met getting paid to bring you some food and you take it and eat it. By faith. Somebody say by faith. So we see that faith is all around us in, in daily things. Think about the doctors we visit. We go to a doctor whose handwriting we can't read, who sends us to a pharmacist whose name we can't pronounce, who gives us a drug to take whose active ingredient we can't even spell, yet we pop it in our mouth without a second thought. Doctor says, take two of these, two in the morning, and, and, and take two more in the evenings. Take with food, with water, or don't take with whatever. We, we just pop the instructions. Haven't tested anything on some lab rats. We just pop it in our mouth. And some of us, we, we really experiment stuff. We mix it with stuff. We take this medicine with this medicine. and you, you No, 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 you shouldn't take You don't know how it might interact with this something. So you should, but, but, but people, the point pastor is making is that we have been given a measure of faith and we live by stuff haha, every single day. Think about people who, who still fly, who hop on an airplane. I know that's not happening much right now, but there are those who hop on an airplane. They've never met the pilot or co-pilot. How are they doing financially? Have they cut back on their hours? Are they disgruntled? Have you seen them? How, how, how's their marriage going? Are they happily married? Yet this man is getting ready to fly you across the nation. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah, uh-huh, getting ready to fly you. So we, 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 we don't even know the pilot. We're boarding, people just throwing their stuff up there, finding their seats, buckling and everything, getting their magazines and stuff. I never met the man. Never met him. Never met him. But yet we fly by faith. And don't even worry about the pilot. What about the plane? When was the last time it was checked? Hours are being squeezed now. Companies are losing money. People ain't flying like they used to fly. So, for, so, so don't worry about the pilot. What about just the plane itself? When was the last time it was serviced? Was it on a Friday evening where the technician cut some corners because he had a date Friday night? Y'all better help me, amen. Somebody say it's by faith. And you have some, whether you like it or not, with your doctors. You have it, whether you like it or not, with your pharmacists. You have faith, whether you like it or not, uh, 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 just by eating and, and, and ordering out. You are executing and, and walking by faith because you have no idea what someone has possibly could have done to your food. Thank God for Sister Reason, good old home cooking. But God is good. So, so one of the things we have to understand is this, is that we have been given a measure of faith. There's a certain amount of faith that you have. Now, when you keep that in mind, there's something that has to be done with that faith. It has to be developed. It has to be built up. It has to be exercised. Or else it will stay in somewhat of a dormant, irrelevant form. You know, Jesus said it, it doesn't matter how much you have, as long as you have it. If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you can say to the mountain, be moved, and they will move. Now, I think the best example I can give you about 
this measure of faith that you've been given is that you have to build it up. Think of a bodybuilder. My Lord, I remember how I used to look in my younger days. And not too bad today either. But think of a bodybuilder who builds his muscles. You look at the man, and you see him on television posing and so forth. You see him doing, making all their moves. And you see him turn their backs. You see muscles and bulges and things that don't look even normal. Well, how did he get so big when you look at a, ne- a regular, ordinary person, you know, just walking around? Nothing like that. So how did he get so big? Well, I got news for you. He simply got bigger and stronger and, and, and bulkier simply by exercising his muscles, by using what he had. And you might be surprised about this, but every muscle that that bodybuilder has, you have the same amount. Yes, you do. Mm-hmm. You may say, what, Pastor? Wait a minute. No way. I say, yeah, way. Yes, you do. You have the same amount of muscles that bodybuilder has. You have not been cheated. You have not been slighted. You know, he looks all built and, and bulk and, and everything. There's no difference in the amount of muscles he has than what we have. So keep this in mind. When you think about the measure of faith, and you see God operating in people's lives on a different level. You don't have to get jealous. You don't have to be envious. Because whatever God has for you is going to be for you. You have the same opportunity to take your level of faith and develop it. Someone shot develop that thing. Yeah, develop it. Work with it. If you let it remain dormant, it is not going to build up. And a lot of ways we, 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 we allow our faith to become dormant. Because faith comes a certain way. Faith comes by what? Hearing. And hearing the word of what? Not hearing CNN all day. Not hearing Fox News all day. Not hearing what's going on with this COVID-19 all day. It's good to stay abreast, but you don't need to hear it all day. How does your faith grow? How does your faith grow and enlarge and expand? Faith comes, my God, thank you, Lord, by hearing and hearing the awesome word of God. So you don't have to be jealous of other people. When you see God moving in the life of other people, don't be jealous. He has given each one of us a measure, a certain amount of faith. It's up to you to develop your faith so that you can receive everything that God has. Amen. Even if you're a woman, I know this might sound strange, And you look at that big body building and say, no way. Yeah, 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 yeah way. You too have just the amount of muscles as that big old body builder over there, big old hook, man. Lady, you have muscles too. Now, and you've seen some of them. I don't approve of that. I mean, but that's not my wife. Amen. But, 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 But you see them. If a lady starts exercising, if a lady starts bulking up, she starts taking all these supplements, she will stop looking like a normal lady and start looking like something more of a bodybuilder because she too has exactly the same amount of muscles as that big old bulky hulk looking man. So what are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying you have it. Someone say you have it. What you have to do is just like the bodybuilder, you've got to strengthen your faith. You've got, you got to bring your stuff to pass. You've got to bring your stuff out of the spiritual realm into the natural realm. Amen. You want, to, you want some supernatural things to take place. Uh, and let me tell you something, too. I am grateful uh, uh, and I'm humble about the things that God has done for us and over our life, family. But it's because we've we've been in the word, we've developed the faith, and we've seen the goodness of God and how he works. You and I have the same opportunity to receive everything that God has for you. So it's up to us to take that measure of faith and utilize it and build that thing up by staying in God's word and meditating God's word and reading God's word. Have you ever seen a person who might have had a stroke, and you ever notice that part of the body, it could be an arm or something, you ever notice what happens to it when, because of the stroke, God bless them, 
they're not able to use that part of the body. You notice it starts to either curl and it starts to get smaller. Uh, you can even see it in per, uh, individual legs. It's simply because of lack of use. It's not being exercised. It can't move. That that arm, the muscles and, 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 and things begin to, 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 to atrophy, become smaller. So what are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying the same thing from a spiritual perspective. If you're not doing what's necessary to build up your faith, your faith can atrophy spiritually. And you will not see the things that you want to see come to pass because you're not applying the, the exercise, spiritually speaking, to build up your faith. So that's what we have to do. Somebody said develop it. Yeah, say it again, say develop it. Yeah, why, why leave this earth not getting everything that God has for you? Why leave this planet not receiving everything that God has provided for you? God does not have to speak anything else in existence to give you what you supposed to have. Everything that you and I are supposed to receive by Almighty God has already been provided. We access it by faith. Now, you may say, Pastor, can you go a little further on this faith thing? I sure will. What is faith exactly? Well, Hebrews 11.1 1 says, No, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. So faith is the assurance. It's the confidence. It's the certainty of things that we cannot see. Faith is the confirmation. It's the confirmation, if I can just talk for a little bit. And when you think of, if I can digress, look at 1 John. 1 John chapter 5, verse 14. Look what it says. I said, faith is the assurance, the confidence, the certainty. 1 John 5, 14. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything, somebody help me shout anything. See, anything. Come on now, I don't know about you, but I got some any things I need to ask about, amen? I got some any things I need to pray about. Now, you know, don't put anything in there. Can you say amen? Don't put anything in there if you don't want me to believe for anything. Anything, my God, I feel it, I'm talking to somebody. Anything means anything. Say it with me, say anything. He said, we have this confidence, my God Almighty, that if we ask anything mm -hmm, according to his will, I love that now because, that because some people, you got some crazies out there. You know, you got some crazy praying for somebody else's husband. You got some crazy praying for somebody else's wife. That's not in God's will. So when you line up with the will of God in your life, you can ask anything that you know is according to his will. Anything that according to God's will, he, Lord, help me, he hears us. And verse 15 says, and if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have desired of him. Oh, my God. If we ask anything, Father, thank you. According to your will, we know that you hear us. And Father God, we know that if you hear us, we're going to have our petitions and we're going to receive what we prayed for. So faith is the assurance. Say assurance. It's the confidence. It's the certainty. And one of the words I love about faith says this. Faith is the confirmation. Have you ever booked a rental car? You know, you call in, you know, Hertz or, or Enterprise, whatever co car company you might use, and you book this rental car. You, you, you're, you're at home, and you're making all these bookings and reservations. You give them a number, your credit card, and they give you a number. It's called confirmation. Somebody shout confirmation. Between you and the rental car company, you've just entered into a legally binding contract. Because you've tr you, transaction has taken place, and you've given them some numbers, and they've given you a number called a confirmation number. So when you show up at Enterprise or Hertz, you present them with the confirmation number, and they are, they are responsible, they're obligated 
to give you the car that you signed up for, uh, either something close or equivalent of. Can you say amen? Have it, but, 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 but you can't transact that transaction, can make it complete until you arrive. So what are you saying, Pastor? This transaction is not complete until it has your arrival, until you arrive to receive it. My God, it's the same thing if you have a room. You ever book the room, they'll give you a confirmation number. Even though you have not arrived at the hotel, there's a bed and a TV, <laughs> shower and fresh towels reserved for you. It's simply waiting on your arrival. Say arrival. So, oh, oh okay, so there is a confirmation number. It's the only thing that you have. To, to, to prove or to provide, to provide evidence <laughs> of what you can't even see. Faith is a substance of things hoped for. It's to say evidence of things not seen. So the only evidence that you have about a room, the only evidence that you have regarding a rental car is a confirmation number. And that is just as good as the real thing. Can you say amen? It's waiting on your arrival. And that's a very important thing. The room, the car is yours, but they won't be issued or they won't be dispersed until you have arrived. Help me, Holy Ghost, to break it down. Your stuff, everything that God has, your blessings, your healings, your miracles, your breakthroughs, all of that is waiting on you and your faith to arrive. Somebody help me preach this thing. Somebody shout glory to God. It's waiting on you to arrive. It won't be dispersed. It won't be dispensed. It won't be released until your faith has come up to a level that shows what you're praying for, that you have arrived. My God, I feel it, I feel it, I feel it. The pandemic can't stop it. <laughs> Man can't stop it. Ah, once you have arrived, my friends, you have arrived. Once your faith has increased to a certain level, nothing can stop you from receiving what God has for you. No Republican, no Democrat can stop you from receiving what God has. So what's happening, Pastor? Why am I not receiving what I'm, I should receive? No man can stop God from giving you what you have. Nobody can stop you from being blessed the way God wants to bless you. Just like that confirmation number. Even though you have the confirmation number, it won't be released until you take it to the hotel or take it to the rental car. Then they can release it. It's the same way. When your faith has grown to the point where you are certain, where well, you are confident, when you are fully persuaded that what he has promised, he will bring to pass. You have arrived and it shall be released. Can you shout glory? Hallelujah. So faith is the proof. This is just, I just want to talk, family and friends. I've gone a little bit longer than I wanted to go, but I got to finish. So faith is the proof of things we do not see. And it's it is the conviction of their reality. Faith is the proof of things we do not see and the conviction of their reality. Look at Hebrews 11, 5 real quickly. Hebrews chapter 11, 5 says this. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation... He had this testimony that he pleased God. Enoch, my Lord, didn't even die. Enoch didn't have a funeral. The man just spent his time walking with God, and God looked down at him and said, I like you, and God took him. Isn't that something? The boy is in heaven right now, walking around in heaven, having never tasted death. God is an awesome God. And what was Enoch's testimony? Here's his testimony. All his testimony was, you better listen to pastor and you better listen good. What was Enoch's testimony? Enoch's testimony was simple. He pleased God. Somebody say, make God happy. Uh, keep God happy. 
Don't let, I don't care who else you don't uh, uh, keep happy. I don't care who else is, is upset with you. I don't care who else doesn't like you. I don't care who else plots against you. Keep God happy. Keep God pleased. Keep God on your good side. Oh, my God. Make sure that God, make sure that Papa, make sure that Daddy is happy with you. Can somebody shout glory in this house? He had a testimony. What was Enoch's testimony? Enoch had said, what, what's your testimony, Enoch? You did this, you did that. All I did was please God. All I did was walk a certain way. All I did was hang out with God. We hung out in the morning. We walked together. We walked in the cool of the evening. We kept hanging out so much with God to the point that he just one day said, come on on up here. Come on, Enoch. Skip death and come right on to heaven. He's an awesome God. But without faith, Hebrews eleven six 6 says, without faith, without the assurance, the conviction of their reality, without being able to, and catch this, without being able to perceive it as real before it's revealed. You got to perceive it as real. Jesus. Glory to God. Someone say it with me and say, perceive it as real. Before it's revealed, perceive it as real. Before it's revealed. That's a word for somebody. You got to perceive it as it's real right now. Before it's revealed. So without faith, Without the assurance, the conviction of their reality, without being able to perceive it as real, before it is revealed, you cannot please God. For he that cometh to God must first of all believe that he is, that he is what? He's God. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Can someone shout glory? Can you shout hallelujah? Family, it's going to be by faith. You got to tighten your belt now. Yeah, you got to develop this thing. It's going to be by faith. Uh huh. God ain't holding out on you. It's going to be by faith. It's going to be by faith. And let me give you a secret and let me give you some good news. No one can stop you from receiving what God has for you. You stop yourself. If you let doubt come in and unbelief, you shut down what God wants to do in your life. And here's what I want you to understand. Realize this. There is no time frame. There is no time limit. There is no expiration date on what God wants to do for you. Doesn't matter when it comes. It took Abraham 25 years. It took Joseph 13 years. But it came to pass. God is a good God. He is an awesome God. Oh, yes, he is. As I get ready to close I just wanted to introduce this thing, and I just want you to understand, you have been given a measure. You have been given a certain amount of faith already. It has to be developed, and it has to be exercised. And I want to close, if I can, with this particular scripture. There's an example of this in Matthew chapter 9, verse 27. Jesus had a couple of blind men that were crying out for his mercy. Matthew chapter 9, starting at verse 27. And it reads as follows. And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him crying, saying, Thou son of David, thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was coming to the house, the blind man came to him. And Jesus saith unto them, Ooh, Lord, speak, Lord. He said to them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? Ha <laughs> ha, Lord Jesus. Two blind men can't see nothing, walking in total darkness. They hear the voice of the Savior saying, Believe ye that I'm able to do this? And look how they responded. And they said, 
unto him. Yea, Lord. Somebody help me just shout, yea, Lord. Or do you believe that I'm able to do what you believe in I'm able to do? Somebody help me shout, yea, Lord. Do you believe that I can make that job heaven on earth that you're worried about? Someone shout, yea, Lord. Do you believe that I can make you the head and not the tail above only and not beneath? Somebody ought to shout, yea, Lord. Do you believe that I can speak to that sickness that's trying to come against your body, that's trying to fight you, that's trying to take you out, that's trying to terminate you? Do you believe that I'm able to do so? And this is your time to shout. Someone shout, yay, Lord. You believe I'm able to bless your finances. You believe I'm able to pour you out a blessing that you don't have a room enough to receive. You believe I'm able to bless you to the point where you can be a blessing. And you got to shout what? Yay, Lord. Someone help me say again, yay, Lord. Jesus walked up on two blind men. They said, Lord, have mercy upon us. And Jesus asked them the most unusual question he could ask. Them. Do you believe, first of all, that I'm able to do what you need me to do? You got to get that settled in your heart, family. That's why pastor keeps telling you, I know you hear me harping on this, and I'm not harping on it because the church is struggling or anything like that, but I'm letting you know you can't put your confidence and trust in your paycheck. You can't put your confidence and trust in your money. You have to put your confidence and trust in God. You don't put anything before God. You got to trust him every step of the way. He asking you a question right now. He asking you a question, and he asking you a question. And he asking you a question. Do you believe that I'm able to do what you need me to do? And you have to shout like the two blind men. And they said, yea, Lord. And after he took him to the house, the Bible said that their eyes were open. And Jesus told them, don't you tell anybody about the blessing I've given you. Isn't God good? Someone said it's going to be by faith. I pray that God will give me family strength and give me the wisdom. I just want to introduce this. I think God wants me to kind of reemphasize this again to let you realize. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. You got to have that conviction. You got to have that certainty and that assurance of knowing that God's got you. You got you covered. And he's asking you a simple question like he asked the blind, two blind men. Believe ye that I'm able to do this. And I pray from all your heart that you're able to look God and say, Father, yay, Lord. Say it with me one more time. Yay, Lord. I know you're able to do it. To God be the glory. To God be the praise is our prayer. God is good. Amen. I pray that you enjoyed that message. You know, we're on video and we're online and all these things and we are grateful for what God is doing. We, we, pastor sometimes tries to remain within a certain time frame. I know those that say, Pastor, don't worry about it, just preach. But I just pray that this word has gone forth and has reached those who God intended for it to hear. Don't put your faith and confidence and trust in anything other than God. When he asks you the question, believe ye that I'm able to do this. I pray that you say, yay, Lord. And if there's someone who doesn't know the Lord as your Savior, maybe you're not saved and you're not living the life that you know God desires of you, pray this prayer with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I'm a sinner in need of a Savior, and I ask that you would forgive me of my sins, come into my heart, cleanse me of all unrighteousness, Yes. Father, I need a new beginning. I need a fresh start. I need you, Lord. In times like this, we need you. And I pray right now that you would be my Lord and Savior. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life and fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. I believe if you prayed that prayer, that God has come into your life and he's going to honor you with the precious gift of the Holy Spirit. We love you. 
We pray God for you. Again, this is Pastor J.E. Reeves, Sr., pastor founder of Anointed Ground Church, praying for you, and you continue to pray for us. Remember, it's going to be by faith. God be the glory.